It's 9-0 and versus 8-2. and The Duel in the Dome is back in action. It's the DJ Trev Entertainment pregame show, and we have what is possibly the best matchup of the day. 9-0 and Atwater Falcons against the 8-2 and Sac High Dragons. I'm NorCal's voice of choice, Levi Flores, and this is Lauren Goody Goodman. 9-0 and for the Atwater Falcons, the best start to a season in quite a while, and they are Sac Joaquin Section Division 2 and Sac High Sac Joaquin Section Division 2. So they are very familiar with each other in that, and now they get to meet for the Duel in the Dome at the beautiful Columbia College campus in Sonora, California. It's going to be a great matchup. We're getting the starting lineups here from both teams, and it should be a good one on our hands, man. We've we got to bounce back from the blowout. One of the two losses that Sac High has accumulated was against Clovis West out of Fresno at the NorCal tip-off tournament, 98-61. A big blowout loss there, but it's also Clovis West, so what can you give there? And then the other loss was Wood Creek out of Roseville at the Monterey Trails tournament, seven-point loss, 69-62. So they have one blowout loss and then one close within 10. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I mean, not much to say about Atwater because they're 9-0 and besides just some of the teams that they've played. Uh, Gregory, Turlock, Mountain House in game one of the Manteca High Tournament. Uh, they played in the championship game against Turlock in that as well. So they've played Turlock twice, and they won by five points there. Defeated Sonora at the Mark Gallo Invitational at Central Catholic High, which we will see Sonora later on today. They beat Santa Cruz. They beat Central Catholic. They beat Manteca. And now they're looking to add to the resume and beat Sacramento High, who is repping their white and purple jerseys. Look like the Sacramento Kings. They truly do. And on the other side, the Atwater Falcons in the, the black and blue. Atwater Falcons, they're starting five. Colton Dukes, six foot one senior. KJ Ross, six foot one senior. Leo Cabrero, six foot three senior. Tyler Parr, six foot two senior. And Koi Nguyen, five foot five junior. So a large senior starting group besides the one junior for Atwater. And then Sakai, they have number 10, Shabul Barksdale. 
two, Sir Marius Jones, three, Mike Wilson, one, Bobby Hamilton, and 24, Kendall Hearn. And that's the guy we want to look for, Kendall Hearn. Um, special guy. He had a big game uh, last year uh, against Lincoln. Um, with their matchup here on NorCal Sports TV, um, they got a heated battle. Lincoln ended up winning by a buzzer beater. Um, we had Stockton shut down for a minute because that was <laughs> such a ball game. But um, see where Hearn is. He's a high flyer. Um, if he breaks out at any given moment, it's going to be showtime. So let's be on aware and the lookout for number 24 for Sacramento. It, it truly does look like we have a battle between the Orlando Magic and the Sacramento Kings. <laughs> uh, but it is Atwater and Sacramento. That's who's playing today for game number four of the Duel in the Dome. Yet to come is Calaveras, Tracy, Sonora, Downey. This game's coming up after this. But we have 32 minutes to play first. And here's Kendall Hearn. You can already tell a difference uh, in just the level of play between the last game, which was D1, D2, and this is D2, D2, but very high level in D2. And just looking off that first play, they try to give Hearn a lob, but they didn't come off the screen. Turnover for the Dragons. Here goes the Falcons. Defense gets there. Sakai wants to travel as he possibly had an extra foot there. And there's the travel, and they call it this time. Well, both teams share a turnover, and we see Coach Matt Johnson there. You know, a lot of nostalgia. You talk about the team looking like the Sacramento Kings. They are the oldest school on this side of the Mississippi River. Um, they have a rich tradition, multiple section championships. Over 50 college players have came out of their program in the last 20 years. One of them is Matt Johnson, who's standing as the head coach for the Dragons. And why do you know that information, Lauren? I'm, I'm the Sacramento guru, and I also got to wear the dragon purple as a coach and as a player for a little stint. So the knowledge of Sacramento is a plethora. <laughs> Falcons three off the mark with the Hearn rebound. Kind of looks like Buddy Heald out there, doesn't he? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> there go the Dragons driving in, and the ball comes loose. Falcons one-on-one. -on -one. Hearn tries to make the stop, goes straight up and down. Forces the miss, but then right back there is number five, Leo Cabrero. Cabrero, just huge height difference. Um, clearly noticeable. Let's see how that impacts the game and impacts the Dragons on the inside. It's the first bucket made, and it comes just under a minute and a half. The movement outside. Great handles by Mike Wilson. As this will stay Sacramento ball. Now Atwater, one of the deepest schools, deepest South schools in the section. Um, so them getting the opportunity to play against a team like this today is a really good opportunity for them to see and test the water, literally. <laughs> <laughs> test the water a little bit to see uh, what their team is, is made of. And again, that's what the preseason is all about. I'm going to always reiterate that during preseason time. Go out there and play some people. Stop being afraid. A lot of coaches get afraid to play people. Hearns three. Pogo's off the rim. And here in transition are the Falcons moving very fast. They have a lot of speed. But the Sacramento defense got there and easily took it back away. The fake by Hearn. The kick out. The mid-range put back tip is good by Mike Wilson. And Mike Wilson is a rebounding machine. Caught underneath the backboard and still used the angle in his advantage. That is Leo Cabrero with all four points. Cabrero, I told you, he's, he's going to be impactful. Look at him with his size, his ability to be a 6'3 senior. Step um, back, Wilson, no. There he is again with the rebound. He's in every part of whatever Atwater's doing right now. Tyler Parr facing up against Shabol Barksdale. Won't get enough muscle, flops to the ground, and Sacramento has five on four. Three ball, no. Sacramento keeping with a little pressure, and the jump ball is forced. Getting down there in action is Bobby Hamilton, the six foot two senior guard for Sacramento. Tying it up, causing the jump. And then here's that last basket on the mm. other end.
4-2, now what do you expect out of this game? Do you expect a decently high scoring 60s, uh, mid 50s, or kind of low at 30s I gotta see, to 40s? I got to see where we score on that right now. Uh, not scoring the basketball at a high clip in the first. That may be just the jitters. Let's see what happens once the offense starts flowing. But both teams averaging about 60 a game. So we should be in the ballpark, but I'm always a firm believer as we see that last foul here. Mm. Just unnecessary, out of position. Um, gets an easy contact there by Hamilton. But um, if you can hold it at boys basketball, if you can hold your team under 50 points, I think you have an easier chance to win the ball game. Okay, got to minimize. Then we start chipping off, obviously making sure we don't have too many turnovers. But outside of that, um, if it's a good ball game and there's no defense, we're probably going to have a 60-plus point game. If not, it's going to be somewhere in that 50, 60-point range. Par at the free throw line, 10 points per game, six rebounds, four assists, and uh, one steal per game as well, and two turnovers, which, you know, turnovers, uh, assist-to-turnover ratio there is about even. Kern caught on the outside, finds the open man up top. It's Sir Marius Jones who will knock down a deep two. Strong indicator on the deep two there. Parr uses the handles inside. Jones off his feet. A nice move, mid-range, 12 feet out. Battles its way out, and here goes Sacramento High, and nobody has really put full court defense on yet. Sac High had one opportunity to do so, but that was because they were caught behind the player, and they decided to put the pressure. But these D2 level teams, just now Sac High is putting a few extra steps into their defense. Taylor just got that easy layup there. Here's Parr once again, a very aggressive offensive player as that shot doesn't go for Leo Cabrera. And they trying to push the tempo for the Dragons, and nobody other than leading the tempo is Hearn. Hearn's left hand won't go here on the other end. The Falcons taking advantage from behind. Jones looked like he slapped the ball, but he got it in anyway. We're all knotted up at 6-6, and Sacramento High doesn't like that they're tied. Three and a half minutes to play in quarter number one. This is the Duel in the Dome. Falling down. DJ Trev in the building. Contact DJ Trev for all your DJ needs. 6-6 six, six Atwater and Sacramento High halfway through quarter number one. And we talked about uh, the scoring abilities and what we think this is going to be. But we're still not quite sure just from what we've seen. But tied up at 6-6 six, six and Sacramento took the time out to talk about uh, something that they wanted. What, what would you guess there? More so defense. They got to get stops. And it's how... Again, not paying attention to the offense. DJ Trev is not on the Sacramento team. He's <laughs> unbiased today. <laughs> but definitely, um, I think it was more so defense. They wanted to get something offensively. Obviously, Coach Johnson upset about that last play resulting in a turnover. But uh, also, defensively, how can they make sure that they know where big number five is? But again, they've been trading turnovers. There's three turnovers per team right now. Um, and it seems like when one turns the ball over, the other turns the ball yeah. over. <laughs> Cabrero is the player that's been mentioned. He has four of the six points for Atwater. He averages 10 per game with four rebounds and less than assist per game as a three splashes through for Demarion Taylor. And then there's the steal for Hearn. Taylor coming out playing really focused, locked in for Coach Johnson and the Dragons. Now, Hearn's made a difference in the game. He goes through to the rack and uh, attempts his shots down low, but he hasn't quite made the difference point scoring wise. Everything else, uh, I believe mm -hmm. he's done a great job doing everything, but there's just his first basket. 
11-6, that's five straight points for Sacramento. And that timeout seems like it paid off for Coach Johnson and the Dragons. Good movement by Atwater. Par underneath, and the defense from Xavier Towers was not enough. Not even close. And Par, he's kind of similar to uh, Hearn from what we've seen in the opening minutes at least where he's very aggressive and he gets to the paint. He gets down with the ball. But just like Hearn, that was his first bucket. Mm -hmm. And Par, just good physicality right there. We got a good matchup. Felt like he had the mismatch. Um, he took clear advantage of it. And then Hearn with his first bucket, just an easy hesitation move, floater over the top. Mike Wilson throws it into Hearn. Asking for a screen. Hearn will pull up for three. No. Kiltis dribble unnecessarily. But frustration from the Dragon side. Not able to get some offensive execution. Good rebound down low. Got to make the first one, big fella. Hearn wraps it around. Here he goes. The only man offensively. No one helping him. Nearly converts the play in the end, but Atwater, one on four, an easy stop in the end. Mm -hmm. Trapped up at the high elbow, and the jump is called thanks to Mike Wilson, who wrapped the possession. And it's, it's really important that the Dragons learn a certain level of discipline in this game. Atwater really taking care of the basketball um, as far as their discipline and execution on the offensive end. And you see that bucket right there getting in position, running their offense. Um, and so when they have plays like they just have from her, kind of just ill-advised, not executing their offense for the Dragons, um, they got to work on that and get better with that. Went up for the shot, passed in the end, and in my opinion, he should have just went up to the basket. Should have shot it too deep, too deep. Um, and that's a, a learned behavior over time, okay? Learned behavior over time. Just a junior and, and light experience. you got to understand a lot of these juniors, their freshman year was COVID year. So. Um, and, and we both agreed that he should have shot that. But how do you differentiate uh, always being ready and what you should have just done? I'm a firm believer if you're on the block where he was, you got to shoot the basketball. You should be looking. That's why. Barksdale just looked up for for rebound, exactly. not pass. You're too deep, um, and that's something that's learned over time playing a lot of games. And also, Barksdale's just a sophomore, so he, he's a young guy. They're figuring out how to get him the basketball. Open three, battled out for Colton Dukes. Offensive rebound, Parr flings it up with the right hand. Ball bouncing on the back of the rim. And this will be Sacramento ball as it goes the other way. Too many offensive rebounds. Not capitalized on for, for either team. Atwater, you get five offensive rebounds, and one of those got to go in the basket. And then for Sakai, there's no reason why there's four jerseys around in the key, and we can't secure a rebound. Shot clock is turned off. A three-point difference. Sacramento trying to add to that 11-point total. The handoff. The pass to the corner. The three. No. Offensive rebound once more. Ball poked out from behind. Atwater just trying to keep Sacramento from scoring more so that they can head into the second quarter down by three, and they will do just that as Mike Wilson misses his final field goal attempt of quarter number one. It looks to be low scoring, but there's plenty more time to go. 11-8, it's Sacramento on top of that water. Miners Tree Company. Contact us for all your tree service, lot clearing, and defensible space needs. Miners Tree Company is locally owned and operated with over 20 years of experience serving Tuolumne County and surrounding areas. California licensed and fully insured. Check us out at MinersTreeCompany.com or give us a call at 209-591-3747. Benton Roberson CPA's passion is helping people achieve business success and financial independence. While we certainly provide traditional accounting services such as tax preparation, payroll, and bookkeeping, we also offer a variety of advisory services to help with business planning, social security decisions, income and asset growth, tax efficiency, and much more. Benton Roberson CPAs is here to help our clients achieve their goals through a generational relationship and wealth building. We hope to see you soon. 
Sacramento High, 11 points. Atwater Falcons, eight. That on the screen is DJ Trev. Find him, DJ Trev Entertainment, your in-house DJ. This is the Duel in the Dome brought to you by NorCal Sports TV, hosted by the local Sonora Wildcats, who will play in the final game today. A few of the players already here. Calaveras Redhawks awaiting their turn against Tracy after this game. Still plenty of time, plenty of games. Subscribe to NorCal Sports TV because we want you. Subscribe. It, it takes nothing to do it. Go ahead and hit that button right there next to where you're watching it on your big screen at home or watching it on your phone. Watching it in your living room. Go ahead and subscribe to NorCal Sports TV. 19 points in total from the first quarter. A lot of people would complain and say, oh, this is a boring game. This is a dumb game. But tell us why it isn't. Oh, this we want the ball game to be competitive. I, I, I think people get too caught up in, hey, it's going to be a blowout. Even in our last game, it was a blowout. We didn't get one dunk. So every game is not going to be the same. Um, we want it to be a little bit more competitive, and I like it. I like the energy both teams. Give me oh. a whistle. Oh. Mike Wilson picking up the foul despite Mike Wilson's sending. Mike Wilson's got to get him a Wilson right there. Oh. Highway robbery. It was that right hand by Mike Wilson <laughs> that eventually. Gave him a hand, high five, and, and they <laughs> get called a foul on him. You know he's saying ball doesn't lie right now. The it's going through his head. Not. That's the number one statement right now. Ball never lies. Good pull down rebound for Shabol Barksdale. Proofs in the pudding right there. <laughs> 16 footer off his rhythm, misses. On the left wing, sets up for a deep three ball, hits the block and comes down to Sacramento's number 15, Landon Minifield. Hillier did not care about the world right there. He took that one deep. And another wild pass has the sack high coach with his hands on his head. And again, there's, there's no explanation. And I hear Coach Johnson all the mm -hmm. way from over here. No explanation on why we're making a harder pass and not the easier one. Pass to somebody in a white jersey right next to you. This will be Atwater Ball bounced off the leg, off the throw of Parr, and then a tip of the finger from another dragon. Swings the court from right to left. A dangerous pass when you're throwing over the middle. Park oh, 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 the rejection. Oh, oh, oh. The beautiful stop by Shabol Barksdale. Barksdale with a little nasty sauce on that one. Six foot six sophomore center. Mm. Reaching up there. Thanks, official. <laughs> Ruin the highlight reel. Here's Par. Five to shoot for Atwater. Three will be launched, and it will be good. The three knocked down by Colton Dukes. Dukes with the deep ball. I like it. Atwater playing competitive, trying to give them everything they got. They said the ball game is not over, and this is what we want. That was the first basket made in quarter two as Parr is fouled from behind by number 23, Rajon Bland. And I knew that was going to come unnecessary reach in, but here's the deep three ball by Dukes. That's a great last name right there. The previous games that we've had for the Duel in the Dome, we had mentioned the youth of most of the teams with sophomores and even freshmen. But Sacramento has multiple sophomore players, no freshmen, and Atwater is all seniors and juniors. Heavily ran by seniors, and that's why they have such a strong team this year. Uh, and everyone's afraid of them. I know a lot of coaches are afraid, and obviously they're 9-0. Could be 10 and 0 by the end of today, but Sacramento count them one, two, three, four sophomores. Really long, young program. Um, again, rebuilding. They've had three coaches in the last four years, um, and so getting some footing is really key um, to seeing what these sophomores can develop to. Mike Wilson straight underneath an easy bucket. That's their first points of the second quarter. 
Sakai now picking up a little bit of full court press. Easily broken by the Falcons. They're going to try to penetrate. Kick back out. Three, top, no. Mike Wilson saying to push. And they got to be intentional with their defense. Atwater being able to get some stops. Straight up and down. No use of the backboard. Sir Marius Jones adds to his total of four. I'm seeing how Atwater handles the pressure. They got an easy layup before. Assistant coaches jumping up and down, and the three ball won't go. Not exactly the shot you want in a transition opportunity. Atwater with numbers. There it is, 22. Asmin Muldrow will force the timeout as it's a two-point game. 15-13, the duel in the dome by NorCal Sports TV. Minner's Tree Company. Contact us for all your tree service, lot clearing, and defensible space needs. Minner's Tree Company is locally owned and operated with over 20 years of experience serving Tuolumne County and surrounding areas. California licensed and fully insured. Check us out at Minner'sTreeCompany.com or give us a call at 209-591-3747. <laughs> DJ Trev, your in-house DJ for the Duel in the Dome, the inaugural Duel in the Dome. I'm NorCal's voice of choice, Levi Flores, Lauren Goody Goodman by my side. Thank you for being here. I'd like to take a minute to thank our crew, our producer, Dion I, Taylor Rector, Joya Armstrong, uh, another cameraman, Avery, Wayne, Forrest, Christy, and I'm sure I'm missing a lot of other people's, but a big crew bringing you six straight games today from Columbia College. And, of course, the, the teams participating as well. Couldn't do it without them either. Couldn't do it without them. Good showing by all six teams coming into the tonight. I really mean, good ball clubs. I'd go out there and play myself, but I don't think you want to see 5% shooting. 15-13, <laughs> uh, and there's a double dribble. I thought we got rid of that in middle school. Well, the turnover is still too high for my varsity liking. Um, and, again, unnecessary mm. turnovers. Um, is always going to be the most frustrating for coaches. Falcons setting up their play and a lot of talk on the court between benches, players, and just everything in general, a whole mashup of words. As Parr gets it over, trying to make the block was number 15, Landon Minifield, but Parr Put it just high enough and got it to drop down that in time a, to tie it up. That was a dime by Ross. Falcons kept that alive. Sacramento takes it back in the one-handed jam, the daily dose of iron. Falcons the other way. You might get the dunk, but you got to get back to play the defense. You said it once. I'll say it twice. It's 17-17. Cabrero, he's a special player uh, for Atwater, really just running the lane, doing his job. Ooh. There's the foul on Leo Cabrero. Came down with a full swipe. Let me see the rim grazer. By Sir Jones. This is Bobby Hamilton, the senior guard, shooting free throws for Sacramento. Hamilton, just under six points per game. Hamilton also 70% from the free throw line. Three from the corner, Falcons short, comes right into the hands of another offensive player. That's Leo Cabrero, but he can't get the two-footer. Mm -mm. But Atwater with another offensive rebound. They've done a really good job on the offensive boards uh, despite a, such a close score. I think Hearn is forcing a little bit. Three from the corner again, that time a little better, but it still wraps around and out the Atwater ball. Hey, 
earlier we saw Oakdale Riverbank, and uh, one of the issues with Oakdale was that uh, they're, they're a good shooting team, but they were just going too fast to the rim. They weren't mm -hmm. slowing down, and Outwater, they're getting good looks at the basket. Do they need to slow down? Is that nope. their issue? Hearn elevates the one-handed jam. I'll say it again. It's the daily dose of iron for Hearn throwing it down in Outwater. Answering right back underneath. They're going to get the basket and the foul. Mm -mm -mm. They go from highlight play to giving up a basket. And this game is going nowhere. It's just neck and neck. No. Both teams doing the same exact thing. Same level of turnovers. You see Hearn cocked him back and pulled the house down. But then Atwater, again, they're not getting excited about a bucket. Two points is two points is two points. Their thought process is take the ball out quick. The Dragons have not done a good job of getting back. Let's get back and they maximize right there getting the three-point play, the old school way. 21-20 with the three-point play from Colton Dukes. And down underneath, Shabol Barksdale evades the defense. The Dragons have done a fantastic job. First team today that's really spread the ball throughout all their different players. Lincoln was uh, pretty good that Lincoln, way too Lincoln in the previous game, but they had a few high scoring players. Right now, it's pretty even around an average of four points. Lincoln had a crazy amount of bounce. To get everybody involved like that, that's a crazy thing, but. Throws that are, gets the bullseye. It's Coy Nguyen, the five foot five junior from deep three point range has tied it up. And balance, balance is key to everything. Curran wants to answer two minutes before the half. Pulls up, 17 footer, rattles out and an easy rebound for Leo Cabrero. The bad pass kept alive, back in to Coyne Win. Swings it over, Colton Dukes, another one. Mm, mm, mm. Dukes for three. I believe that's uh, the first lead for Atwater since mm -hmm. early first quarter. Uh, at the end of one, it was 11-8. Very tight, but now Atwater really making that difference. Driving in, top corner of the box, and Mike Wilson brings his team down by one. That's six points for Mike Wilson. Final minute of play in the first half. Screen set by Cabrero. Par parked. Three. Dukes. No. Rattles out. And a five foot five player beating out two of the tallest players on the court for the rebound. And then dishes it over to Dukes. He gets two. And I want to say that was Cabrero again with the easy lay. My apologies, Cabrero. Now the turnover for the Dragons. Pass up, Colton Dukes elevates, slapped across the face. Checking for a bloody nose, he gets two and making sure he's not gonna get blood on the court as he walks back down, plays some defense. Hearn elevates and Cabrero will get foul. Number two. It's to land the trading buckets and we see right here just running the lane. Hearn comes back, he tries to cock back on another one. Just goes to the basket hard, we saw that. Last play for Dukes. They got the ball up quick. Dukes just ran like, hey, I'm about to throw this thing down. And got an easy layup. And Colton Dukes still holding his face, holding his nose as he got hit across the face on that mm. last play. Worst feeling in basketball for sure. Three-point lead for Atwater, and they have 10 to shoot before the end of the half. Cabrero sets the screen on the left side. Dukes takes it in. Reach over the top. Count the basket. And one more coming for Tyler Parr, the six foot two senior who's pushing down low. He has six points. And it's the swipe, Barksdale, it's the swipe. You can't, too much body contact, but that was a great move by Parr. Let me show you something, young sophomore. This is how I create contact, misdirection, throws it at him, and, and again, initial contact of the hands. The angle, she explaining it to Coach Johnson again. And sometimes too, which is why it's so important for Biggs to just jump straight up. It's the wailing of the arms that officials look like. Sacramento finds themselves down by five, entering the final 16 minutes. Outwater 32, Sacramento 27. Lauren, going into the half, what is Sacramento saying? Hey, they got to get back on defense, be able to protect the rim. If you're Atwater, you want to get stops in transition, stop trading basketball. 
DJ Trev on the scene at Oak Pavilion at Columbia College. Come on by, two more games left tonight. But the second half underway in just a few. All the way up from Los Angeles, from we Los just Angeles. heard that. What made you put Miles Little into the camp? Well, you know, we were looking for an overnight camp that would really help develop his sort of independence. Um, and this looked like a beautiful setting for the kids um, and also really foster his independence, meet new people. And I want to say one of the best best things about this um, camp, this particular camp, is the ability to see the games uh, live streamed on YouTube. It allows you to not be at camp, but also still participate in that particular part of camp. And so I thought that was really amazing. The announcers were great. The angles, the instant replay, it really made the kids feel special. Would you bring Miles Little back oh, up to camp? For sure, 100%. And we're bringing friends. I think um, one of the wonderful things that I saw when I came to pick him up is how um, collegial, supportive um, the older boys are with the younger boys. And I think that that um, is really heartening for me because that's how I want my boy to be when he grows up. And so I think that he has some really great um, examples of really kind people on and off the court here. This is a commercial, from the video to the sounds of nature, the music, the words on the screen, the transitions, me, the voice saying these words. This is a commercial, Justin Flores Productions, audio, video, and all your media needs. They make commercials like this one. Minner's Tree Company. Contact us for all your tree service, lot clearing, and defensible space needs. Minner's Tree Company is locally owned and operated with over 20 years of experience serving Tuolumne County and surrounding areas. California licensed and fully insured. Check us out at Minner'sTreeCompany.com or give us a call at 209-591-3747. Benton Roberson CPA's passion is helping people achieve business success and financial independence. While we certainly provide traditional accounting services such as tax preparation, payroll, and bookkeeping, we also offer a variety of advisory services to help with business planning, social security decisions, income and asset growth, tax efficiency, and much more. Benton Roberson CPAs is here to help our clients achieve their goals through a generational relationship and wealth building. We hope to see you soon.
Benton Roberson CPA's passion is helping people achieve business success and financial independence. While we certainly provide traditional accounting services such as tax preparation, payroll, and bookkeeping, we also offer a variety of advisory services to help with business planning, social security decisions, income and asset growth, tax efficiency, and much more. Benton Roberson CPAs is here to help our clients achieve their goals through a generational relationship and wealth building. We hope to see you soon. All the way up from Los Angeles, from we Los just Angeles. heard that. What made you put Miles Little into the camp? Well, you know, we were looking for an overnight camp that would really help develop his sort of independence. Um, and this looked like a beautiful setting for the kids um, and also really foster his independence, meet new people. And I want to say one of the best, best things about this um, camp, this particular camp, is the ability to see the games uh, live streamed on YouTube. It allows you to not be at camp, but also still participate in that particular part of camp. And so I thought that was really amazing. The announcers were great. The angles, the instant replay, it really made the kids feel special. Would you bring Miles Little back oh, up to camp? For sure, 100%, and we're bringing friends. I think um, one of the wonderful things that I saw when I came to pick him up is how um, collegial, supportive um, the older boys are with the younger boys. And I think that that, um, is really heartening for me because that's how I want my boy to be when he grows up and so I think that he has some really great um, examples of really kind people on and off the court here. This is a commercial from the video to the sounds of nature, the music, the words on the screen, the transitions, me, the voice saying these words. This is a commercial. Justin Flores Productions. Audio, video, and all your media needs. They make commercials like this one. Minner's Tree Company. Contact us for all your tree service, lot clearing, and defensible space needs. Minner's Tree Company is locally owned and operated with over 20 years of experience serving Tuolumne County and surrounding areas. California licensed and fully insured. Check us out at Minner'sTreeCompany.com or give us a call at 209-591-3747. Benton Roberson CPA's passion is helping people achieve business success and financial independence. While we certainly provide traditional accounting services such as tax preparation, payroll, and bookkeeping, we also offer a variety of advisory services to help with business planning, social security decisions, income and asset growth, tax efficiency, and much more. Benton Roberson DJ Trev hooking up the music during the half has us all bumping in the Oak Pavilion. At the half, it's 32-27. The Atwater Falcons lead Sacramento High. Oak Pavilion home to the Columbia College Claim Jumpers and allowing us to use their facility today for the inaugural Duel in the Dome, hosted also by the Sonora Wildcats, who we will see in the primetime game tonight against Downey. After this one, though, it is Calaveras Tracy. Of course, we have to finish probably one of the best games we've seen all day, which is Atwater, Sacramento, starting off second half. Mike Wilson... 15 foot deuce. Looks like they have a lot more intensity behind uh, the Dragons as a foul occurs underneath on Shabul Barksdale. That is foul number two. Three, excuse me. I was like, I think that's number three for Barksdale. Um, Wilson knocking it in. This is Tyler Parr, who's been very physical down low. And uh, we talked about how Sacramento looks like the Sacramento Kings, but Tyler Parr kind of looks like DeMontis Sabonis <laughs> down low. <laughs> it's kind of a both-way situation. Tyler Parr, 29% from the free throw line, 6 of 21 on the season. You want to see a little bit better percentage at 
any level, honestly. Of course you do, and especially playing the position he plays. He gets to the line probably a lot. And another turnover for the Dragons. Totaling in seven on the night. Sacramento applying the pressure, applying the heat, and then it's a pass up court to Colton Dukes, who had a great first half of 11 points. Kick out, par three, rattled in and rattled out. And Barksdale got to be conscious of not picking up that fourth foul offensively. Good find down low. Shabol Barksdale, once again, sophomore, six foot six. Mm. Uh, you said it's hard to find six foot six freshman. He's a sophomore, mm -hmm. uh, and we've seen a few of those early it's, on today. It's something in the water. Um, <laughs> I, I was in this thought process too before when the 2024 class was very young, um, and they're going to be seniors next year. I think one of the most dynamic groups that we've saw in a while. Um, but this young sophomore class. Seems like they got some really talented players. Over the last three weeks that I've been calling for NorCal Sports TV, I probably saw more impressive sophomores than I've seen overall in all grades. Well, what's in the water and what water are they drinking? <laughs> Is it Voss, <laughs> Crystal, Geyser, Dasani? I, don't, I need some of it because I'm only 5'8". <laughs> that shot won't go. The rebound put back good over the top. That is 24, Kendall Hearn. And that's when Hearn's the best. He, he's by far... Um, probably one of the most athletic players on this team. Um, but when he's, you know, scratching for boards and doing things like that, that's when he is the best to me for the Dragons because he finishes everything around the rim. He has a great vertical. Really slept on senior in the city. All knotted up at 33 apiece. Pushing down the Dragons. They lost control. One team asking for a blocking, the other for charging. Yeah. I mean, what do you what do you want here? The officials just let it play out. Got to be stronger with the basketball, if you ask me. Um, you you call for a mismatch. You call for a mouse in the house. Put them in the house. It's, it's that simple. Don't expect a call. Don't look for a call. And if they give you an and one, that's an added bonus. There Takes we go. The cut comes back around, goes back in anyway, but misses the attempt. The Falcons will now have a two on three and then just slow it up and get past that timeline. Par doesn't slow down, rejected. And that is number four, Demarion Taylor, who got the stop. Three on the way for Sacramento, nothing but net. It tickles the Twylon. Cabrero, that was great defense on the stop down low, but Jones just came back with a better play, hit the deep three. Mixed up a few terms there, nylon and twine. But nonetheless, he got the three. Here's the look. Catch, deep ball, split cat. There's DJ Trev once again, your in-house DJ for the Duel in the Dome. It's DJ Trev, and this is NorCal Sports TV. Miners Tree Company. Contact us for all your tree service, lot clearing, and defensible space needs. Miners Tree Company is locally owned and operated with over 20 years of experience serving Tuolumne County and surrounding areas. California licensed and fully insured. Check us out at MinersTreeCompany.com. Or give us a call at Miners Tree Company, contact up. A small momentum change in favor of the Dragons. It's 36-33. This is the duel in the Dome. NorCal's voice of choice, Levi Flores and Lauren Goody Goodman. We got a ball game. Again, like I said, basketball is about peaks and valleys. Um, Dragons had a, had a, were in a valley for sure in the first, but Atwater still pushing and fighting through. And our guy, Dukes, adding to his scoring pleasure. 13 points. Open three ball short. Gives it up to Wilson inside the paint. Took a step in but missed his by wrapping it out. I just think they're going to, the Dragons, 
young and touted. They'll lose a couple, but these young sophomores are getting a lot of quality clock. As well as Atwater, you're seeing the discipline and the focus from them um, because they're full of singers and they're, and they're holding themselves accountable as such. Parra hands it off to Jaden Hillier. Falcons have 10 to shoot. Cabrero comes up to set the screen, but the poke, the steal for Demarion Taylor. And Sacramento will have a chance to set up. Corner, back over the top for Shabol Barksdale. He goes left side and got it to flush through. And whatever the conversation Coach John Johnson had at halftime, the official looking over at Coach Johnson as he's halfway onto the court, <laughs> kind of giving him a glance just to give him a warning, say get back. Not a lot of space for the official or the, the coaches right now, but he does have to be careful in his placement on the court. And I will say it's a different energy when you are a former player. <laughs> there is Definitely. a different energy when you coach as Cabrero gets another one to slide in there. When you are a former player, your energy and how you coach Coach Johnson is a very young coach, um, first year with the Dragons. So you're going to see a different level of passion and tenacity from him than you've seen. Good find. Uh, it's a dime right there. Everyone coming over to help. I don't I don't know if Shabul Barksdale was coming in to get the basket or if he was coming down to get the rebound, but they were both in communication to have that availability. Hearn tosses up. The alley-oop misses as he is short on the attempt. Mike Wilson didn't have the hops. He was, he was jogging too much. He should have ran full sprint to go get that if he was going to get it. Cabrero fought for the rebound, and Colton Dukes bats it away. Here's Hearn being chased down, forced to wrap around. Both teams want to foul, but Hearn just gets the deuce, not worried about anything. And it's 42-37. The change from five points in favor of Atwater has now switched to Sacramento. It's been all Sacramento and the fieriness. Comes from the coach, and we'll see probably a T here soon if Coach Johnson <laughs> can't keep it together. But Atwater, not phased at all. I, I, I like their resilience. They don't play emotional, and look at the up and under. None able to finish right there. But they're not playing emotional. They're just playing hard. Let's get the basketball game done. Um, I like clean basketball like that as well. Dukes had very good attention of the shot clock, and... An interesting situation. We're going to head to a break, but the shot went up with one second on the shot clock, and then it looked like it hit the rim, but Colton Dukes didn't think so, so he got it off in time, but it didn't actually end up happening. Cal Sports TV summer basketball camp 4th through 12th grade boys and girls for the summer of 2023 if you like what you're seeing on the court right now your child can be a future star of uh, junior high, high school, college or the NBA so sign up for the NorCal Sports TV summer basketball camp 42-37 and an odd turn over on that last possession for Atwater as Sacramento will bring the ball up with 2 to play in quarter 3 17 footer pushes off the front iron and here are the Falcons trying to come back from their five point deficit. Parr driving the lane, wraps up, both hands strong to the rack, not deflected, just a shot that didn't go. Another offensive rebound for Atwater. They have been dominant on the boards today. Even though the Dragons have that little height advantage, 
I feel like Atwater's doing a better job of getting in position for the offensive board, and they're pursuing the offensive boards. We talked about it in the first half. All the Dragons are just running back and retreating, and Atwater's crashing the boards. Good hesitation, then the find to the cutting man. That is Azim Muldrow, who uh, has four points now. Quiet game, but your job is to be a fill-in. And so he's doing a good job of playing solid defense against Barksdale. Open three, short, and the Falcons fighting for the rebound. Good job by Coy Nguyen to let go and let his teammate pick it up. And then right back at it, Azim Muldrow. Two straight possessions, two straight baskets, four points. Quality, solid minutes. Understand it's not always about starting the game. Um, it's about coming in and being effective, and he's doing a great job of that right now. Thanks to him alone in the final 30 seconds, he's made it a one-point difference. Mm -hmm. And now Hearn wants to take it back. And I never, liked the, I never liked the stagnantness in there. Look, almost turnover. But the offense is stagnant. You, you know, you got 12 seconds, 13 seconds on the clock. Um, a little bit longer than that, to be honest, where he sat there and dribbled. But mm. create some movement. The defense for Atwater was still in the strongest point. And we see both coaches. Great shot right here from the baseline side. Just trying to get some information to see where the foul was at. But, again, a big part of, of Hearn and the difficulty in guarding him is um, you got to let him come down. And because he has such a high vertical, he jumps out the gym. Um, no ability to come down on that last play, and that's why Parr picks up his second foul. Azim Muldrow, three points per game, two rebounds per game, and truly nothing else. But right now, proving to the coach that he plays really hard, he can continue to do so. That three finishes off quarter number three, and now the Falcons back up on top by one. That was Jaden Hillier who knocked down the triple to finish quarter three, and now we have eight minutes to play. And we'll Insult see. to injury. Wow. Quarter four starting in just a second. Minner's Tree Company. Contact us for all your tree service, lot clearing, and defensible space needs. Minner's Tree Company is locally owned and operated with over 20 years of experience serving Tuolumne County and surrounding areas. California licensed and fully insured. Check us out at MinnersTreeCompany.com or give us a call at 209-591-3747. 44-43, thanks to the three from Hillier, the Atwater Falcons back up on top. At the end of quarter one, it was 11-8 in favor of Sacramento. At the half, 32-27 Atwater, and then Sacramento, they came out of the gate swinging in the beginning of quarter three. They took a five-point lead, complete momentum shift, but now Atwater's back up on top. What you see right now is DJ Trev. He is your in-house DJ for the duel in the Dome, and he's been at multiple NorCal Sports TV events. Uh, we trust him. He's here. He plays good music. So if you need him for any DJ service, contact him. DJ Trev Entertainment. Final eight minutes. Lauren, what do you expect? Um, it, it, This is the ball game we want. I mean, it, just as exciting as Sacramento gets a play and they think that they're in, in the lead, Atwater comes down and hits a three, and that's been pretty much the ball game the whole game. I like it. Seesaw matchup, yeah, even going ahead and give us a tough one all the way down to the stretch. So let's see how both teams now, they know what each other can do, who's going to have the guts to really get stops when they need to and score when they have to. Parr is tripped up by number 23, Rajon Bland. Trying to cut off the baseline and avoid him from getting a baseline pass or shot. And a little hip bump. Mm-hmm. You can tell Parr is just uh, a lot bigger player, six foot two senior against a five foot eleven sophomore. So Parr definitely got the benefit of the doubt, no matter what happened on that situation. And again, another offensive rebound, second chance opportunity for Outwater Falcons. They they've just done an amazing job on the offensive boards. For me, I'm accepted it. Three ball misses for Dix. box now. Offensive rebound, and who is it? It's a Z Muldrow. Man, Parr with the seal. I know the camera angle got that, man. Between Parr and Dukes, they boxed out crazy. That got Muldrow to that rebound. 
three from the corners. Third Pretty opportunity. Much. Ball trapped inside the paint. Has to get rid of it. Fighting for it with his own player. And the Sacramento coaches are saying, hey, we're the jump ball. It, they were two Falcons. Driving, kicking, three. No. Five opportunities. <laughs> Another one. And then there's the foul. But let's go back to a second ago. There was two Falcons inside the paint who were fighting for possession, and they both had it uh, in the same second in Sacramento. Thought mm -hmm. one of their players was down there, and they were just fighting with each other. Nobody boxing out in white, though. Stop standing around. Stop looking. Five opportunities, and you're down. Like, there has to be a sense of urgency with getting the basketball. You cannot give up that many opportunities. Outwater's been doing it all day. They've been getting good rebounds. Good steal right there. Hearn. Being chased down by Tyler Park, gives it up and a little too flashy. Not the time. We need the bucket. I, I get the thought process. Good snatch and grab right there. Give me them cookies. But go dunk on him, Hearn. You want to get your young sophomore in, he's trailing too much. Right? A lead lob. Uh-oh. Yep. And that was Muldrow who made that stop too. Coming straight down, separating that ball and the player. Hearns being talking to now. Mm -hmm. Unnecessary little tangle up. Um, don't need it. And I like I like the energy from Parr. Get in, get in his head, Parr. You want to be distracting as possible. That's what players are supposed to do. You don't have to re respond with physicality. You respond with buckets. Good steal right there from Dukes. Dukes leading up. Muldrow's on the left side. And the clamp, the foul. He had the guy open on the left side. Decided to go up with it. And the defense picks up a foul. And there's Barksdale picking up his fourth foul. Eight. Fourth foul for Barksdale. Four fouls, eight points. And now do you put him to the bench and for how long? Absolutely. You got you to gotta get on the bench right now. I would give him two minutes. Two minutes because if we lose him, I don't see a significant bring back. Who, who do you bring back to fill him in? So... Um, for me right now, I would go give him a two-minute blow. Let's see how we play without him for the next two minutes. Um, and then give him back. He got four minutes to play everything out. Second half has been pretty transparent in fouls. Four on Sacramento, one on Atwater as Sacramento launches the triple that misses with the Dukes rebound. Uh, only five fouls in this allotted time. Not a lot, and I like the teams not fouling as much. Of course, a little bit credit to the officials who are letting him play out. Mm -hmm. But five fouls, very Physi low. Physicality, though, came in. And, and sometimes when the officials see that it's going to be a physical matchup, initiation, you see the difference in this game win with a nasty pull-up right there. But the difference in this ball game, and if you watch our last ball game, Lincoln dominated, so they, they had to change the calls. Up. If... They were playing probably a sack higher at water. You would see a lot probably more calls happening because both teams are playing physical. Same thing here. Travel turnover. But both teams are playing physical. It's no need for the officiating to get involved. And you see when. Ooh. The stop and pop was nasty. Okay. Don't ever stop and pop like that. You know, he, he popped all over him. It can't happen like that. Good change of speed. But that's a great, that's a great shot as a point guard, though. No in just with a no look pass there. Uh, when you're playing that zone full court press, it's very easy to fake out the defense and find an open man when you don't look at the player that you're about to pass Parr to. Parr just trying to drop a dime too, but again, make sure that it's not to the detriment of what we're trying to do. Tenth turnover for the Falcons. Wilson making a move on Dukes. Caught up 10 feet out off the backboard and the travel. And, and now t another turnover for the Dragons, of course. Coach Johnson is not ecstatic about that one. Four-point lead. Uh, when does time management come into play? Four points, not a lot. Two possessions, of course, you have to make your baskets. Uh, but what point do you start going all the way down to 10 seconds before you make a play? They don't need to. When you got players like Parr, who's setting it on flames, And, and the frustration is setting in for the Dragons when you score, right? So don't necessarily need to stall out. 
I want to add insult to injury whenever I'm playing anybody. So um, I'm not going to pull it out, stall just yet. We got a couple shot clocks uh, in there. Muldrow gets the jump ball with Shabal Barksdale. Calling the jump ball. Oh, yeah, no, no contact whatsoever. Almost a travel. And a little confusion on who the possession arrow going to. And we see Wilson for three. Got him. <laughs> there it is now a three-point game. Thanks to that, Wilson has 11 points along with Hurd. Man, I really like Wilson's game, man. He, he, very deceptive in, in what he needs to do with the basketball, but when they need a crucial bucket right on time, it's either Wilson or Hearn and comes through quick. No look, backdoor pass, the bounce to Muldrow, but then he is stopped right away by Shabul Barksdale. Three on the way, deep one. Yes, he's got it. It's Sir Marius Jones tying it up at 49 apiece. He just caught that one, closed his eyes, and let it rain. I like the confidence from the young sophomore. Muldrow. Back up top. Hearn swipes it away. A drink flies in the face of a spectator. The drink flies <laughs> and the popcorn goes. I love it. <laughs> Deep ball by Sir Marius Jones right there. The splash zone. Definitely gave me SeaWorld vibes on that on that <laughs> last play. What was the orca's name? <laughs> Classic orca. Here we go. 49-49, three and a half to play. And Sacramento has tied it up with six straight points. Parr. Good discipline by Parr. Just shot it too hard. But that was a great move by him. He's been extremely solid. I like his game. Hearn a little sloppy on the handle, still coming out. Mm. It's getting in the danger zone right now. It's like, you know, Jaws music in the background because every <laughs> possession matters, every possession counts. Both coaches animated up, involved. I love the fieriness. It, it, it leads your team, especially with these young ones that, that don't always have the energy that they need. Love to see it from coaches. Falcons make the stop in the win. Forced to dribble out. He kicks it up to KJ Ross. Ross over to Parr who drives right out the basket. Strong with the right hand. Floats up. Gets his offensive rebound. Put back after put back. And finally Mike Wilson takes it away for Sacramento. The swing to the side. Sir Marius Jones goes up. The give underneath and two points for Sacramento. Good decision by Jones. Jones haven't talked about him a lot. But this second half he's definitely come up. And he's making good decisions as a young player. Sir Marius Jones wraps around. A little body bump, but the give came before, and it's Duel in the Dome, back in action. Sacramento takes the lead for the first time in a few minutes. 51-49, Atwater trying to break free from it once more. Not a lot of time left, and there's no looks for that shot as of now. 
Wilson gives up in the offensive foul on Mike Wilson. Foul number one. Five, seven. New win. Way to have your head up. Seeing in transition and just stepping in the way. It's a classic little man's job. I like it. Shot clock hasn't started. Mm, I don't think they're even aware that it's not on. Mid-range, battled out, Sacramento rebound. And now Sacramento wanting to call a 30-second timeout. 51-49, still no change in the last 30 seconds. And let's stay here with it because um, that was a crucial play right there. No shot clock violation. Um, they need to be aware that the shot clock is, was not running that last possession. Um, so pretty much Atwater got a free <laughs> freebie there with no pressure. Uh, they did get it off in time. It was they did get it off. They, they, shot, they shot extremely early, but having that shot clock in motion um, is pivotal. So... Kind of got a free play with no no pressure there. But coming back, it's a two-point game, man. We got the crowd rocking. <laughs> they love DJ Trev. Somebody's liking it. All ages. <laughs> okay. Coming up next for the duel in the dome, it's the Calaveras Redhawks and the Tracy Bulldogs. Don't want to miss out on that. Another great matchup today. I mean, one was a blowout. Everything else has been very, very close. And then topping off the night, it's Sonora and Downey. Two minutes, Lauren. Two minutes and two points. Two minute mark and we going in. I mean, we might as well. There's no no point to holding back right now. You want to call overtime now? You did it in the first game. You can do it right I, now. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say we're gonna go overtime. Uh, the way it's just played out right now, this this game is looking like, you know, can't nobody take the lead. I think they may need an extra period to figure things out. In the first game, McLean at Bret Hart. Uh, we went into overtime. Bret Hart had a great game. They were battling the entire time, even though McLean is a division higher. And once we got into that overtime period, the McLean Highlanders just dominated mm -hmm. that final four minutes, which was kind of wild because the entire game, there wasn't really anything above 10 points or not. And they took a 10-point lead immediately and then held it for the rest of the four minutes. So we'll see what happens here, though. 90 seconds, and there's still no score. It got to this point of 51-49 with two and a half minutes, so it's been 60 seconds exactly since a score, and Atwater will try to tie it up here. Crucial. Let's, let's see what Atwater is made of. They, they've been able to crash the boards extremely well. New Wynn should have looked to shoot right there. Deep three ball. For the lead, it's over. Par. Double I was like, team. who's right there for par? <laughs> Good job by Sacramento. Not contesting that much they were straight up and down they're giving a hard time for the shot but they allowed it to happen not fouling so that mm. Atwater couldn't take the lead and now that bucket coming when it did Atwater might get the last possession oh <laughs> yep all day long I want to say he carried I don't know what the call Coach was Johnson is back out and there, and there is the is. technical we knew it was coming at some point and the worst time possible Worst time possible right now. And let's see the play. Coach Johnson animated. <laughs> the T, very casual. <laughs> I know typically they come. I know you're allowed to laugh at him, but can I? I mean, it's yeah, a little absolutely. bit funny. I, I love the uh, antics. He is coaching just like myself. Um, I see a lot of myself in him. <laughs> um, but even more, you know, young coach decision i'm frustrated about the call absolutely i'm upset but right now to get a technical you don't need it that that's something that i would tell my players so i gotta hold myself as a coach accountable as well no matter how frustrated i am on that moment it is too pivotal in the game it's 49 seconds left you just gave them the lead because you got a technical it was a turnover who cares about the turnover um so now you have your team in the hole so that's just a learning curve that you're going to get over time as he gets his belt, gets under his belt.
a technical foul assessed to coach Matt Johnson, the head coach of Sacramento, has allowed the Atwater Fountains, Colton Dukes, to head to the free throw line. He hit two of two. He's 79% at the free throw line on the season. The best free throw shooter, which, of course, I'd like to see a little bit more from your best free throw shooter, 79%. But in the time where he's needed to make those free throws, he does pay out. And not only that, but Outwater also gets the ball with 49 seconds left. It was 51-49 with two and a half to play in favor of Sacramento. Now it's tied up with a minute left and then two points just inside that minute as Atwater tries to add on two more. If they could add on two and not foul on the other end, it's almost a guaranteed win for Atwater. They got to pick up, though. I mean, 30 seconds is still a lot. Game's not over. Like, what are we doing here? If you're the Dragons, continue to play. It's got to be the firing. Your coach just got a technical for a reason. They got to play. You don't need to foul. Mid-range, 16-footer. He misses, and it's a defensive <laughs> rebound. <laughs> the offensive boards. Now it's time to foul. Shot clock turned off, and finally the foul coming. I believe that is Damarian Taylor who picks up foul one, and it is. And look at that, seven fouls on Sacramento. Finally. I never thought we was going to get to the bonus. I was thinking <laughs> at the 139 mark when they fouled down here at Water, I was thinking, golly, it's never going to get to the fouls because it was still like two to five at that point. Um, but again, pivotal port in the ball game. 49 seconds left. Dragons turn the ball over. Their head coach gets a technical. You, you just have to keep your composure. Let's go. Miss free throw by win. New in 71%. Do you look for the win? Do you look for the tie? You called it earlier. Overtime could be on the way. But Atwater, the steal, the foul with two seconds on the clock. And now it will be Muldrow going to the free throw line for Atwater in a one and one to see if he can pull off a potential Victory in the final two seconds. He's four of eight from the free throw. Uh, excuse me, free throw line on the season, fifty percent. But two seconds, you get the miss, you throw it up, you get the win. It just depends on what's about to happen. And you gotta respect Atwater. They came in here, they fought, they called the Dragons, did their Dougie. Um, again, just great ball. Game. Oh. Nearly a game-winning three in the Sacramento coach. Matt Johnson still wants a foul. He's all the way on the court, but what could have been an intense game-winning shot. Look how close that was. I think, he called a, I think he called a timeout if it missed. And it hit the block. That was a deep, deep shot. Wow. I cannot believe how close that was. And the congratulations by both teams. The good games coming across, 53-51. The Atwater Falcons stay undefeated at 10-0. They'll go on to play against Sierra in just a few days at home. For Sacramento, they will play against Laguna Creek in Elk Grove uh, on December 21st as well. Highly fought battle. We knew it was going to be close, but the technical in the end mm -hmm. won it for it, Atwater. It was the turnover that led to the technical. It was the carry. If, if the turnover doesn't happen, the technical doesn't happen. So it was the turnover call that led to the technical that led to the, the difference in the ballgame. Two points. <laughs> it was 51-49 Sacramento with two and a half to play. It was tied 51-51 with a minute. Within 10 seconds under that minute, then the technical was assessed to the official. And our producer is saying he called the timeout and everything, but in the end... Oh, he didn't call the timeout, excuse me. But 53-51 is the final score. Uh, two great teams, one great game. And we have Calaveras Redhawks and the Tracy Bulldogs coming up next.